If you're the kind of business owner who spends that money as soon as it hits your bank account, this video is for you. I know this sounds kind of funny, but when I started my business, I didn't know what I was gonna do when I actually made money in the business. I just assumed you should spend it all back on the business so that you can grow it as quickly as possible. And if you've seen my previous videos because you're subscribed, right? Then you know that that is exactly what I did and it worked until it didn't. And my body and my brain, everything started to break down so if you're the kind of person who can't wait to spend money either on personal or business expenses as soon as you have that next big launch then I want to talk to you today about some of the things that I did in order to get that under control so I stopped living in such a cash crunch and started having control over the money that I was spending as it came in. Hello, welcome or welcome back. I'm Christina Scalera. I'm a e-commerce expert and I help you to grow your wealth as passively as possible so that you can work when you want to, not because you have to. So for many years, even though I had a successful business, I more or less lived paycheck to paycheck, both personally and in my business life because I was always trying to sell more in order to pay last month's expenses and I was always trying to get ahead and catch up and sometimes that would happen and it would last for about a week and then I would fall behind again. So this cycle perpetuated itself for, I'm not even kidding, years. And that is why when my clients come to me and they tell me about a certain kind of cycle that they're in that's related to this or looks exactly like this, I know exactly what they're talking about because I was that person who wasn't good at math or numbers and definitely wasn't good at money. Or at least that's all the story that I told myself for many, many, many years. As it turns out, I actually was good at money because the secret is that we can all be good at money. We just haven't learned how to be good at money. We think that it's some innate skill that we're born knowing. Just like you innately wanted to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel because this is just going so fabulous already. All joking aside, find Financial literacy is no joke and it's something that really should be taught in school more so than whatever garbage was taught in geometry or algebra or I don't even know. I pretty much got to see in every math class so who knows, who cares. Obviously I'm living just fine without knowing how a triangle works. So the one thing that I did do right was I set money aside for my taxes or I uh, actually paid them as I went, which was even easier for someone who has a hard time keeping track of their money or maybe less of a hard time keeping track of it and more of a, you just wanna spend all of it. So one thing that the government loves for you to do is pay them early and often. And you can set up automated payments right to the tax man, either to your state or at a federal level. My suggestion would be to automate your tax payments as well as you possibly can. Because if you know that every single month, so much money is coming out of your account on this date and this date and this date, or every Friday or whatever works for you. For me, I like to Doing it weekly because I really find it's hard to fall behind if you're always catching up every week. But if you find a schedule that works for you, then try to automate that and don't trust yourself to just pay it quarterly. Don't trust yourself to have that launch and then pay the taxes later. You can always get a reimbursement if you overpay, but if you underpay, there are very severe penalties and interest payments and fines and it just it isn't a fun thing to have to go through. Trust me, I know because when I moved to Washington, I didn't know that I had to pay business and operations or something, business and, ex I don't even know, business and excise tax, that's what it is. I didn't even know I had to pay that. Microsoft doesn't have to pay it, but I have to pay it. So I found that out and I found out, you know, I had to pay all these interest payments and late fees and all this other stuff. So I took care of that once I figured out that that's something I have to do here and no big deal, it's all caught up now, but in the future that will be paid automatically so that I am always ahead of schedule and if they ever owe me a refund, then yay, money back in my pocket and I won't have to owe them money unexpectedly. Falling behind on your taxes is bad for a lot of reasons and you won't go directly to jail contrary to popular belief, but it will prevent you from doing important things like buying a house if you have any kind of back taxes that you owe or any kind of outstanding payments that are due for this year. So so for example, when I went to close on this house that I'm in currently, my primary house here in Washington, well, I had to make sure that in order to close on the house, my taxes for the year were paid. So that was a pretty big tax bill that I wasn't expecting in May of 2022, but we made it work and we're in this house now. By the way, that was purely 
my business taxes. My personal taxes had already been filed, done for the year, all that kind of stuff. So just be aware that sometimes with businesses, it's a little bit different and it can hold you back from doing some of the things that you want to do in your personal life if you don't take care of these things early and often. So the second thing that you'll wanna make sure that you're doing inside your business to be better with money is paying yourself. And like the taxes, this has to be automated. So I know that not everywhere you can automate tax payments perfectly. Maybe you can set up a separate account or something, but when it comes to paying yourself, I know for a fact there's no excuse not to automate automatic payments to yourself. I know a lot of people are at the beginning of their business journey and they don't necessarily know how much money is going to be coming in, but I think a lot of people approach this the opposite way that they should. Namely, they're like, well, when I have this much money coming in, then I'll start paying myself this much. But I want you to start paying yourself today, even if that salary is $1, I don't care. Set up that automatic transfer. You can always increase the, the amount later, but it's, that annoying thing that we put off doing for months in setting up that automated transfer. So just set that up from your business checking account to your personal checking account. Make sure that it flows one way and one way only. And even if it's just a dollar every single week, you are paying yourself as a business owner. Not only does this set you up for success so that you can easily and quickly just up the amount and that way you can pay yourself more and more over time, but it also establishes that mindset of paying yourself as a business owner, of acknowledging that you're also important in this business. And for some of you, I know you're like, what, not pay yourself, that's crazy. But for a lot of you, you're like nodding along and you get it, so you're my people. I didn't know how to pay myself for the longest time in my business. I would just kind of launch and if the launch went well enough, I would pay myself some extra money. Otherwise, I was just kind of skimming off the top of my business, legally, of course, like this was a legal transaction from my business paying me, but I was barely scraping by because I was just kind of taking from my business and putting it into my personal account, whatever expenses I needed that month. And they were very meager. I mean, this was like rent and minimal amount of money for like car and salad. I don't know why I said salad. I don't even eat that much salad, but <laughs> like basically just like cheap food is what I'm trying to say. So start paying yourself today. And the reason why I mentioned taxes first is because as you begin to pay yourself more and more, just keep in mind that it might affect your taxes. And as you're automating that payment to yourself, you may as well pay your taxes at the same time. Again, I like to do this weekly when possible instead of bi-monthly or once a month, because I just find that in my head, like the amount, I know this sounds so funny to some people, but like in my head, the amount of money that's like building up in my bank account and then like, deposits if I do it once a month. It just, I don't know, I don't like that feeling. I would rather see it more regular. And I think with my ADHD too, it really helps me when I have similar appointments on my books for uh, days of the week. So if I know that every Friday is payday, then it just, I don't know, that helps me out a lot. Every Tuesday is my client day. Every Wednesday is like clients and interviews for other people's podcasts. Every Thursday is like I work on webinars and funnels and things like that. And then every Friday is kind of a day for myself to catch up on loose ends, to do creative work, to pay myself. Mondays are like my health and day off kind of thing. And then the weekends, I just, it's, it's my days to do whatever. So I really like following that rhythm. It seems to have helped me a lot. And there's no shame if that's what works for you too, because that's the beauty of having your own business. You have to find what works for you. Just because your favorite YouTuber said that they pay themselves every month or quarterly or whatever, it doesn't mean you have to do the same thing. You have to look at your lifestyle. You have to look at what your tolerance is for uh, money and finances and accounting. And for me, that's just a weekly thing that I like to check in on. I like to get paid on. I like to pay my taxes on. So that works out really well. Number three, not only should you start paying yourself, but you should also start putting money away in a retirement account. And I actually have a very different approach than most people for two reasons uh, when it comes to retirement accounts. So a lot of people will tell you, especially like the Dave Ramsey-ish people of the world, they're gonna tell you to pay off your debt first and then, you know, like as you're building a little savings account, I think you should actually invest in retirement first because you cannot, like once that tax deadline hits, you can't invest any more in that account for that year. I can always make more money and pay my debt off later, but I can't always put the money that was going to be in that retirement account in that account. So for example, let's just say as I'm, like, as I'm filming this, it's almost April 15th, like, I guess the deadline's the 17th this year, whatever. I'm gonna have someone in my comments like, you know the deadline is actually the 17th, that's the one that. <laughs> I know, whatever. I'm just saying that the deadline is approaching for taxes this year. So on April 17th, 
2023, you can still contribute to your retirement accounts. It's the last day that you can fill those babies up and that's it. Like April 18th comes, no more, it's not allowed. It's closed forever for good. So one thing that I started doing that changed everything, it changed the entire trajectory of how I handled finances in my life was I started putting $5 a week into a Roth IRA. Now at the time I qualified for that. Unfortunately, I well, I guess fortunately, I don't qualify for that anymore because I make too much. But if you make under a certain income threshold, if you're married, it's a little higher, you can contribute to a Roth IRA, which is an amazing tax savings vehicle potentially because it allows you to contribute and pull money out when you're retired uh, tax-free. You've already paid the taxes on them. If you are making too much, then you can always contribute to a traditional IRA or there are other options for self-employed business owners that go above and beyond those two. But that's the account I started with. That's the account that I think it's pretty safe for anyone to start with because you can also use that account to invest later. You can use it to save. You can use it for a lot of really cool different things. But again, it can only get funded for that tax year between January 1st of, of whatever, 2022 and April 17th of 2023 for last year, just as an example. And that's it, like that is it. You can never contribute to that again for that tax year. You can contribute for this year, you can contribute for next year, but you cannot contribute anymore once that is closed off. Again, a lot of people are like, no, pay the debt off. But like, I just look at it as uh, the, from the perspective of a business owner and I say, I can pay that debt anytime. Now that is not an excuse. We're gonna talk about debt in a second. That's not an excuse just to let it sit there, to percolate, to grow. You know, that's not what we're talking about here. We, we will get to that, we will resolve that in a, a minute. Uh, as someone who had $80,000 of credit card debt at one point in my life, like we'll talk about that. <laughs> but for the time being, when it comes to savings and retirement accounts, I definitely think this is something you should set up an automatic contribution to because as it closes, even if you have $50 in that account, that is way better than $0. And what contributing to this account did for me more so than anything else was it gave me the confidence to know that this is something that just a regular person like me can do. I thought there would be some like magic wand or some financial person I would have to hire and spend a bunch of money with for them to tell me these things. No, I just read Ramit Sadie's I Will Teach You To Be Rich. I got to the chapter on Roth IRAs at probably around 3, 3.30 in the morning, like no joke. And I opened up the Charles Schwab app because that was what he recommended in the book. And in less than five minutes, I had contributed the first $5 to my Roth IRA account at 3.30 or whatever, 3.45 in the morning. Like it was that simple, it was that easy. And that has created a lifelong savings account for me that has grown into the tens of thousands of dollars and it will soon reach six figures. So it just starts with the $5. It just starts with the confidence that that small amount gives you to know that you did this correctly, that you did this the right way and that you have the ability to save. Because for a long time, I think that was a lot of my problem is I just, I knew how to spend, but I didn't know how to save. It was a skill I had to teach myself. And so if you have trouble saving money maybe it's because you haven't had practice yet maybe it's a skill just like playing the flute or learning how to I don't know ride a unicycle like these are skills you're not born knowing them so you just haven't had enough practice at saving yet and this is the best way to flex that muscle and try it out okay so number four we're finally talking about debt the big bad debt in the room I don't know if I should tell you guys this but the number one thing that helped me when I was in a lot of credit card debt and had trouble sleeping at night wondering how I was gonna dig my way out of all this was just knowing that I couldn't go to jail for it like no one's gonna put you in jail just because you have a lot of credit cards that are outstanding or mortgages or whatever. Like if you have student loan debt, if you have credit card debt, like there's no one that's gonna come and put you in jail because you're behind on your payments or you're not sure how that's gonna happen. In fact, a lot of these agencies are more than willing to work with you. So if you just call them up and get on the phone with them, it's a very humbling experience. I've been there, my friends, but they are willing to work with you and to create a custom payment plan or to just help you do whatever you wanna do. And I've also found through my own experience that when you overextend yourself, they tend to do things like limit the amount of credit on your card so that you can no longer max it out at a higher amount, it's a lower amount now. So these are some of the protections that are in place, but obviously that's a pretty severe situation to get yourself into. Hi, speaking from experience, so I'm not here judging you, I'm here to show you that it is possible to be on the other side of that, to have a life that isn't dictated by moving uh, balances from this card to that card and figuring how you're gonna pay this card on this deadline and this one's due two days later and all that stuff. I've attended that dog and pony show many, many times and 
and it's not my favorite. <laughs> Probably not yours either, which is why you're still watching. So if you do have any kind of personal or business debt that you are trying to get rid of, the best way to do that is just like everything else that we've talked about here today, create some automated payments. And again, I did this on a weekly basis with my credit cards. So what I would do is I would just have $20 going to all of my credit cards every single week, right? And so I would see my debit card balance or my checking account balance getting low and I knew that I needed to refill that so I could work on that I could refill it and then that would be full again for like the next month or two whatever and then as this was happening I forgot to say this <laughs> so I actually had set up each of these cards that I was paying off with $20 a week or whatever I had set them up to auto pay Netflix or you know Hulu whatever like those monthly subscriptions so they were staying active because if you don't spend any money at all your credit card company is just going to shut those cards down now that's great if you live in Dave's Ramsey world and you don't need credit, but I don't know what land that actually works in if you don't have $600 million and an estate in Tennessee. So in real life world, you need credit. You have to have credit in order to qualify for a mortgage, in order to qualify for cheap debt that you can leverage into additional assets like I've been able to do with my business and my real estate and all that stuff that I've invested in now. So if you want to have a real life, like you, you want to be a real boy in the real world, then you're going to have to have a credit card. And the best way to do that, if you are someone who has shopping problems or spending problems is to destroy that card so that you can't use it out in the real world. You have no idea what the numbers are. You can't plug it in to PayPal late at night to make, you know, a, a very expensive shoe purchase or whatever else you're going to do. So with this technique, you have the cards getting paid off automatically every single month in low amounts, which doesn't feel like a lot, but if you have like a $3,000 balance on a card, that $20 is gonna really start to add up at the end of you know a few months. You're gonna look and see that a couple hundred dollars have been paid off, and that's a very exciting feeling that will encourage you to pay off even more. Plus, since you've removed the temptation of spending because you physically do not have access to these cards anymore, but they're still building credit on your behalf, then it's a very easy way for you to manage that credit card without actually managing it. Because again, we cannot live in this world without eating, without buying, you know, towels or clothing or just things that we need in our life to sustain uh, a basic human existence. So if you are a shopping addict or if you have a spending problem or if you just find that you're not very good with money that, you know, there's more of it going out than coming in, using some of these techniques, while they might seem extreme to someone who has this under control, if you do have any kind of problem in this arena, it's going to be really helpful just to, you know, make sure that you're not sabotaging yourself. I understand that for a lot of people, this is not gonna be applicable. It's gonna sound kind of extreme, but for those of you who do have the same kind of issues that I encountered and that I had problems with, then this is gonna be really helpful because you're gonna be able to sleep better at night knowing that these things are taken care of while still building your financial future, even if it is $20 at a time or $5 at a time, whatever you have to throw at that debt. Okay, so number five, and by the way, I'm, I'm going in the order that I would go in if I had to start over. Number five is reinvesting in your business. Now, I made this number one, and you can see, you know, sections one through four, why that may or may not have been a mistake. <laughs> I spent all of the money that I could possibly make in my business back on the business. While I don't regret doing that because it ultimately was successful and led to a higher valuation, which was a higher payoff for me when I sold my business, it was a pretty risky move. And I wouldn't recommend this for anybody that has a business that's still in like the fledgling stage. It kind of still feels like a lot of doors are closing in your face. I've been there, I know that stage of business, but if you can move into a little bit more of that like flowy excitedness, like if you know, you know, let me know in the comments too, if you know. And if you can move into that, that stage, then it might be time for you to be making some bigger moves in your business to reinvest in things like a mentor or courses or contractors. I often find that investing in operational help is the most important. And again, if you have any questions about operations, this, you know, I'm not paid or whatever, but someone who's been a big help in my business for many, many years is a woman named Nicole Boucher, and she has a podcast called Pixie Dust and Profits. So you'll want to check her out. I'll try to remember to link her below. But if I don't, that's a pretty memorable name and hopefully you have some time to go look her up, listen to her on your drive home because it's a really great 
a podcast that combines Disney and business, uh, her two loves in life with her partner, her uh, business partner, Yasmin. If you are interested at all in growing your business and the VA route, the course route, you know, those things haven't really been working out so hot for you, it might be time to think about your operations. That was how I was able to eventually, you know, clone myself, AKA, become the idea generator in my business while you know Nicole is the amazing person who makes all those ideas come to life and makes them happen. So that was a big one that I invested in that felt really scary at the time. But again, you know, since I was spending all my money on my business anyway, why not? And that one actually ended up working out. There were a lot of other ones that were big mistakes, but I would say investing in the operations and system side of my business, hands down, helped it to run smoother, remove me from it, give me more white space and put me back in the role of a creator versus an operational manager, like, logistical type person. Okay, so number five is your emergency fund. And admittedly, this is something that I am terrible about prioritizing. It's just like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> Once again, if you automate any of this stuff, it happens on autopilot. There is nothing to forget, so it happens guaranteed every single week or month or however often you have that set up. So don't forget about your emergency fund. It really does help you to sleep better at night. And I know it can be a little bit difficult if you're still trying to pay off debt and build an emergency fund. And this is actually one area that I will agree with Dave Ramsey on, like as much as I hate to admit that, like bleh up in my mouth a little bit. His premise that you should save $1,000 is actually really helpful. And I do think that if you could save up $1,000, not only again, is it flexing that saving muscle, it's also showing you that you have that available to you. And you know, $1,000 doesn't go as far as it used to, but it still goes pretty far. So if that's something that you can start to set aside, again, $5, $20, whatever you have to set aside at a time, safely in maybe a high yield savings account, maybe something you can't really touch. Again, that's just a fancy name for a, a bank account. Like it, it took me four seconds to set up my high yield savings account at PNC. Like I did it all online and PJs probably had, you know, a hot mess of makeup on my face, dripping down, whatever, who cares? That was what I used to get that set up. And I'm not saying you should go with them. I've been impressed with my experience so far, but there are certainly a lot of other high yield savings accounts out there that have great interest rates and that you can set up in your PJs any time of the day or night, even at 3.30 in the morning, right after you set up that Roth IRA account. <laughs> So as a final note, don't forget to, if you are investing in anything, don't forget to actually invest. Like if you're using a traditional or a Roth IRA account, you have to actually go and invest those funds. You can't just like let them sit there. They're not actually doing for you until they're invested. But luckily the places that are really easy to open them like Vanguard and Schwab and things like that, they make it easy for you to invest as well because as that money is invested, they are making money, right? So we all love money. They like making money. You like making money. It's a win-win for everybody. And you just have to make sure that that happens. So in my experience, again, I'm not a financial advisor. You shouldn't take advice from me. This isn't even advice, but I'm a big fan of investing in indexes, like things that track the S&P 500. So I'm a big fan of Schwab's mutual fund. It's SWPPX or SWPXX. I don't remember. It's like switches. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're a boglehead, um, which is just like a, a, you know, a term for people that follow index funds, then you'll probably likely be invested in something like VU, which is Vanguard's total market index fund. And they have some other ones that are tracking more like niche things in addition to the S&P 500. You really don't need to know a lot about this. Just find a fund that tracks the S&P 500. Just know that some of them have an international component. So if you want a little more diversification, little less focus on American stocks, then you can look for something like that. Or if you want something that is very heavy on American stocks, which obviously a lot of the big tech players are American stocks, then you can invest in something like VU. Now, I would not recommend under any circumstances that you're investing in individual stocks. <laughs> so I get that it works for Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett and all those people, but if you are new to the world of investing in stocks, that is where most people tend to gravitate towards because that's the big flashy stuff that they've seen. They had a buddy who invested in Tesla in 2014, whatever. But the biggest thing you can do to help yourself in this circumstance is to diversify, which means investing in a whole bucket of stocks. And things that track the S&P 500 obviously have a lot of diversification 
as compared to just investing in Tesla. Now, did I start an experiment on Instagram where I buy one share of Tesla every week and we see at the end of the year when it's my next birthday, did I earn more than a Chanel bag appreciated? So if you don't know, which I don't expect you to, this was on Instagram. If you wanna follow along, it's at Christina Scalera. But basically I was gonna buy myself a Chanel bag for my birthday. It was my 35th birthday this year. I was really excited to do something special for myself. I've always wanted a Chanel bag. I don't know why, because I don't know anything about Chanel or Chanel bag. It just, it seems like the thing to do. I like France, you know, whatever. So I was about to go and buy a Chanel bag. However, the money girl in me said, maybe there's something else we could do that's still fun, but also not like this frivolous. It just felt really frivolous. I'm not saying it's frivolous, but I should, it, it's kind of frivolous. But I wanted to do something different that was a little bit interesting and unique. It doesn't seem like it has really caught on, but I think it's really fun and interesting every single week. So what I've been doing is every single week before the week starts, I put in what's called a limit order. So basically this just means that I say, I would like to buy one share of Tesla this week at like name your price. And of course, if you name a price that it isn't going to hit, then you're not going to end up buying it that week. If that happens, then I have to buy it on Friday at whatever Friday's trading price is. So sometimes that's high, sometimes that's low, right? But what I'm trying to do is get a little bit of a discount on Tesla every week so that at the end of the year, I have 52 shares of Tesla and we're gonna see, does, did I make more money by buying Tesla and you know, for what I could sell it for then? Or did I, would I have made more money buying a Chanel bag and you know, Ch Chanel's like notorious for price increases. And you know, basically would I have been better off investing in a Chanel bag or in Tesla stock? So we'll see. It's a fun little experiment that I'm doing that uh, has nothing to do with business or really investing, but it is interesting. So if you wanna see me, you know, lose my butt some weeks on Tesla, that might be uh, a fun place to follow along along is at Christina Scalera. If there's anything you walk away with from today's video, I really hope it's the fact that anyone can get into investing, into putting money back in your bank account from your business. You can pay your taxes off early. Like these are all things that are possible to you. And if you listen closely, you heard that the undercurrent of all of this was automation no matter what dollar amount you start with. Not only are you going to be building confidence along the way as you start to see these balances on your credit cards dip and the balances in your checking and savings accounts, maybe your new Roth IRA start to grow, you're also going to be setting yourself up well for any decisions you decide to make in the future. For example, when I went to go buy a house, I was able to lean on the savings that I had put in my Roth IRA because that was available to me if I had to tap into that. I didn't, but you know. I hope by using some of the tips in this video that you're able to see that financial success really is in your future. Even if you're starting from a place like me, which is very financially illiterate, very spendy and not very saving oriented, and honestly, in a lot of stress and in a lot of debt because there is a way out for you. And if you're not in debt or stressed out about money, you're just looking to learn a little bit more or maybe a little curious about what it looks like for me behind the scenes as a business owner, I hope you also learned a thing or two about how I pay my taxes and how I treat my auto investments and savings and just some of the things that I have on the horizon as a result of being better and learning more about money and financial literacy. If you enjoyed this, as always, make sure you share it with one friend and I will see you next week. Thank you everyone. Bye.